Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Sigoy. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player, and I've been vegan for over nine years. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, which has helped over 500 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to hear today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, we're doing a myth-busting series for those of you that want to transition to a plant-based lifestyle. So uh, I just did a podcast on my own vegan journey. It's uh, probably like out two weeks ago, but like one or two weeks ago, there's a few of them. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes when I transitioned to a plant-based diet. I don't want you to make some of these similar mistakes. And so I want to break down a few myths here for you so that you're equipped to make this transition properly and that you actually have a good experience with transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle. So the number one is a lot of people think that when they transition to eating more plant-based or 100% plant-based, that they're going to lose weight. That's not the reality that we live in anymore. When I went vegan nine years ago or plant-based nine years ago, um, there was no vegan junk food, all right? It took me one year to learn that Oreos were vegan. The only option I had as a treat was banana uh, tofu that was flavored with like banana or strawberries. That was all I had. Now, if you go into a Whole Foods, there's hundreds of vegan products um, that you know most people consider healthy. And so the reality is that if you are to transition to eating vegan and you're utilizing some of these vegan products, a lot of them are higher in calories, right? So you're more likely to overthrow your calorie balance that is needed in order for you to lose some weight. So it used to be a truth that when you transition to plan base, you know, again, nine, 10, 15 years ago, that you would lose weight because all you had, all you could eat was whole food plan based. There was literally nothing else for you to eat. And whole food plan based is really low in calorie, high in volume, high in fiber, high in vitamins and nutrients, where your nutrient receptor would be satiated, your gut would be satiated because you had more fiber. So you would feel like you ate a lot, but you didn't in actuality. And so that's what would put you in a deficit. And that's why you would lose weight. But the reality is, if you're not eating 100% whole food plan based, in your transition, then you're more likely including some of these a bit more processed vegan products, um, which are tend to be higher in calorie, which will throw off your calorie balance, which won't cause you to lose any weight. So going plan based is not an automatic that you're going to lose weight. You still need to do it well. Right. And then myth number two is that you can eat as much as you can, right? It used to be true before, but it's not anymore because now again, there's more processed vegan options available. Um, and there's still a lot of people that will even tell you that if you eat whole food plant-based, you can eat as much as you can. Um, that is not a philosophy that I adopt by because scientifically, no one's ever been able to disprove that if you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight. If you're calorie surplus, you're going to put on weight. No one's ever been able to disprove that concept as much as they've tried to, right? They call it seco calories in versus calorie out. No one can disprove it. So if you eat as much as you want and it's whole food plan based, but you're eating foods like nuts and seeds and mangoes and dates and bananas, they are whole food plant based. They are technically health foods, but they're very dense in calorie. I don't know if you ever looked at calorie for one date. If you eat five of them, that's a, the equivalent of a massive Buddha bowl, right? There's a lot of calories in some of these whole foods. And so you can't eat as much as you want because you could technically be putting yourself in a calorie surplus and you're going to not potentially eat enough protein, right? Because when, when we tell you to eat as much as you want, most people don't go like, yeah, I'm going to load up on tofu and tempeh. No, they go like, I'm going to load up on sweet potatoes, on dates, on bananas, on some oatmeal, things that are, I would say like more tasty than eating tofu and tempeh as an example. So you cannot eat as much as you want if you eat plant-based. It's not going to guarantee that you're going to lose weight while doing it, right? There still needs to be a structure there. So point number three, um, myth number three, is that being vegan is always healthy. Again, used to be the case maybe nine, 10 years ago, not necessarily the case now. There's a lot of processed foods that are out there. If you want to know what's going to be the best and unprocessed for you, it doesn't come with a nutritional label, right? When you grab a banana, there's no nutritional label on it. It doesn't say ingredients, banana, and a bunch of other things. There's none. There's no list. It's just a banana, right? So 
if you can stick to foods that don't have nutritional labels that don't have ingredient lists, you're on the safer side. But again, there's a lot of amazing healthy products or combinations of superfoods that will have a nutritional label. So I'm not saying to stay away from them 100%, saying like the majority of food you should eat should not have a nutritional label. It'll make it a lot easier for you to make health conscious decisions, right? Because if you're eating um, a bag of vegan chips, a bag of vegan cookies, bag uh, or a container of vegan ice cream, like, yeah, you know, from time to time, it's fine, but you can't rely on it all the time as a source of like good food because it's vegan. All right. That's not, that's not how it works. Um, ice cream is still ice cream at the end of the day. Um, the other myth is in the whole food plant-based community that you will get enough protein. So let me put a little disclaimer. Yes and no. So yes, you will get enough protein to be healthy. Right. So studies show 0.8 gram per kg of body weight. It's actually a really low number of protein. You're looking like 50 to 60 gram for most people. Some women you're looking like 40 grams, depending how light they are. If you're someone that is overweight that is carrying excess weight, grab the number per lean body mass versus the overall of your body weight because the number of protein won't be super jacked up. But a lot of the weight you're carrying is excess fat. So we can't count that you need protein for that. Right. So we just want to, I just want to be clear for that. But you will get enough protein to be healthy by consuming a whole food plant based diet and kind of just eating in whatever pattern you want. But if you're someone that wants to improve your body composition, meaning that you want to build some muscle and lose some fat and have a specific physical look, you need to put an emphasis on protein, right? Not to the extent that bodybuilders tell you that you need to put emphasis on protein by eating a pound, a gram per pound of body weight. I'm 200 pounds. I don't need 200 pounds of protein, right? I need about 150 grams of protein per day for a shift in body composition, which I've done for all my transformation. And I've been able to get a six pack, build some muscle and achieve amazing results. And we use the same rules for our members. If you don't have enough protein, there's not enough amino acid for the protein is amino acid. There's not enough amino acid to build muscle. So if we're just doing cardiovascular exercise and not eating enough protein, well, your amount of muscle mass will decrease because there's not enough of a stressor on it to require it to grow. If you're not strength training, if you are strength training, but you're not consuming enough protein, your muscle, your proteins, gonna, your muscle is going to eat itself because there's not enough protein coming in to fuel it. So the only other place where there's valuable protein for it, it's in the own muscle and you call that a catabolic state. So if you're just doing cardio, not watching your protein, you're screwed. You're going to look skinny fat. Uh, if you're doing cardio and you're watching your protein, uh, you're going to get skinnier, but you won't really have a good shift in body composition because there's not enough stress on the muscle through strength training. If you're doing strength training and not watching your protein, you're going to go in a catabolic state. Your muscle is going to eat itself, right? Because you're, if you're strength training and you're not getting enough protein, your body's going to look for protein and it's the own muscle that's going to go after. So you need to strength train, eat enough protein. That's going to put you in the ideal spot, right? And then the other variables will be make sure you get enough calories for the goal that you want. Deficit if you want to lose weight, surplus if you want to put on some muscle and always include a little bit of cardiovascular exercise because yes, cardio helps you burn more calories, but guess what else it does? It makes your little potato here a lot stronger, right? If you don't have, you can have the nicest biceps and the nicest six pack. If your heart's not strong, you're still going to die. So you want to make sure that you are training your heart, right? Because it's pumping vitamins and it's pumping the blood around your body. Like you need that to be healthy. So going back to my point, um, you won't get enough protein to achieve a shift in body composition. If you're just eating whole food plant-based, you'll get enough to be healthy, but not to look a specific way that you're potentially wanting to, if you're listening to this podcast episode, the other myth is, um, that you need to obsess over protein, right? So I know it's the opposite of what I just shared, but you don't need to obsess over it either. Again, like I mentioned the bodybuilding world, like some people even say like one to two grams per pound of body weight. So I'd be looking between 200 and 400 grams of protein for myself. It doesn't make sense. You don't need that much protein. It's too much nitrate. Your body's just going to pee it out. And it's just very expensive protein that you're peeing out at that point. So you want to look between the 1.2 gram to two gram per kg of body weight. We've got amazing results with over 600 of our members throughout the years. Um, and that's scientifically backed. You don't believe me, you can look at the book, The Plant-Based Athlete as well. They cite all the studies on there and that's recommendations that they have in the book by the amazing Matt Frazier and uh, Mr. Robert Cheek. Robert's the man. Um, so yeah, don't need to obsess too much over protein. Uh, the other point is that your training should be somehow different. I've heard that quite a few times actually, that when you go plant-based, you should be training in a different way. You don't need to. You need to train for the goal that you have. You're 
regardless of what your nutrition is, you need to train for the goal that you have. So if you're training for to doing triathlon and Ironmans, train for that sport. If you're trying to, sh if you're training to shift your body composition, train to shift your body composition. So that's going to include a combination of strain training at a minimum of three times per week and some cardiovascular exercise to help you burn a little bit more calories and make sure that you have a strong heart, right? You don't need to train differently because you're eating more plant-based or if you're a hundred percent plant-based, the body just knows physical like stressors, right? So whether you're curling with a dumbbell, a broomstick with grocery bags attached to the end of it, a brick, a rock, whatever it may be. It just knows gravity. Your body just knows gravity. And it needs a certain amount of stressor on the muscle to require it to grow, regardless what the form of st stress is, right? So if the goal is to build muscle, you need a specific type of stressor versus if your goal is to build muscular endurance, if you're training for an Ironman or a marathon, for example. So you don't need a different training because you're plan-based. You need a training that is targeted towards the outcome that you're trying to accomplish. The training will mold and shape your body to the outcome that you want to have. So that's why it's important to be very clear on the outcome that you want to have. But definitely don't need to change your training because you want to be more plan-based. Um, another one, Ivy shared this one with me. That tofu is bad. That's a big misconception. Honestly, as long as tofu is organic and non-GMO, you are safe. I did a uh, podcast with Dr. Matthew Nagra, uh, which you probably know, um, Dr. Clapper, Mr. Dr. Gregor. I did it with Rip Esselstein. Um, I've interviewed some Dr. B, learned some of the biggest doctor in the plant-based community. Tofu is safe. Right? You don't have to worry about sofu, uh, tofu, sofu. You don't have to worry about tofu, right? In some cases, it helps to strengthen bone, helps to rebalance hormone. It doesn't boost estrogen in men. It doesn't give you man boobs for, for men if you're consuming soy. On the opposite side, a lot of studies show that it slightly increases testosterone. It's not a major amount, but it just proves that it's not going in the opposite direction. Um, for the amounts that is safe, I did a when I did a podcast with Dr. Matthew Nagara, uh, in one study, they tried up to 17 servings of soy. Um, and there was no negative side effects. And when I talked, when I spoke to Simon Hill on a podcast we did together, because we did a myth busting series about soy was one of them. He's like, you could consume that much, but he's like, it's not, not necessarily good because you want to focus on diversity. It's like diversity of protein will be more important than worrying about consuming too much soy. So you can have some soy in your day. I personally have a pound of soy every single day, which is a full block of tofu. And I have every single day for the past, probably the past four years, right? My, my health markers are good. Everything is good. Um, and there's science to back it up as well. So you're good on, on tofu. Just make sure it's organic and non-GMO. And the same goes for tempeh as well, um, which is the name of my dog too. Um, the last one that I have here is that all the carbs from being vegan will make you fat. Carbs don't make you fat, right? Being in a calorie surplus makes you fat. That's the reality of nutrition. Carbs aren't the things that are causing you to put on fat. Where this comes from, a lot of it comes from the Atkins diet or the keto diet. So here's what happened. Carbohydrates in your body. A lot of you, if you've tried to lose some weight, you've probably tried keto at one point. I have at one point way, way in the past. But you have a, a thing called a glycogen reserve in your body. It's kind of like the fuel tank for your car, right? Glycogen is your body's preferred source of energy. How do you get glycogen in that tank is by consuming carbohydrate rich foods. Your body will eat them, put it in this glycogen, it'll be in your glycogen tank. But this tank is like spread everywhere, right? Because you have reserves in your muscle for when you're exercising and when you're running. But just for the idea of this metaphor, just imagine it's in one tank. Once you eat carbohydrate and you consistently eat a certain amount of carbohydrate, um, you're going to keep your tank full. Now, if you go keto or Atkins and you remove all the carbohydrates, and as you move throughout the day, because it is your body's preferred source of energy, you are utilizing glycogen, right? By moving your arms, your legs, sitting, standing, walking, working out, whatever you do, you're using glycogen. As you use it, you're slowly depleting the tank of glycogen you have in your body. Well, there's a weight associated to that tank being full, half empty, or completely empty. For some people, it's like eight to 10 pounds. For me, it was about 10 pounds when I, when I completely got depleted of glycogen. That's where you say like depleted in glycogen. As you deplete your glycogen storage and there's no more glycogen, then your body goes into more of a state of ketosis where you use fat as a source of energy. But it's a very hard and clumsy conversion that is not the body's preferred source of energy. And it's genuinely a freaking miserable way to live, right? If you've tried keto, um, here's my thought on this. 
if you're going to lose the weight, do it in a way that you see yourself living for the rest of your life. Do I see myself not having any sweet potatoes or mangoes or bananas or dates or watermelon or any of these things? No, I love carbohydrates, uh, especially that I know that I can get super lean by eating carbohydrates. And I've done it over 600 times with members. Um, why do I need to suffer? Right? Like, why do I need to suffer? If you do keto 100%, you will lose weight. The long-term health consequences of going keto, different conversation. But for the most part, like, why suffer if you don't have to, right? Life's already going to throw you some punches left and right. Like, why add an extra miserable area of your life? Food is such a big part of, of our life. And there's a social aspect to it. Like, why suffer? It doesn't make sense to me. So what people do is when they deplete their glycogen, when they go keto, and then they eat carbs, their body goes like, yes, fuel, it puts the fuel in the glycogen reserve. The glycogen reserve starts to get full. What happens when it starts to get full? There's a weight associated to that. That's why they see the scale jump up three to five pounds the next day. They're like, I've been keto, I ate some pasta, and then I put on five pounds the next day. Pasta makes me fat. Pasta makes me put on weight. It doesn't. You just stocked up your glycogen storage. And with glycogen, there's water retention that comes with that, right? Not a bad water retention, a good water retention that's essential for the body to move properly and your muscles to function properly, right? So people, that's what started happening over time. Like I went keto and then I put on, I ate carbs and then I put on some weight. It's not fat you're putting on, it's glycogen, it's water retention. It's a good thing for you. So how we help our members lose weight is just keep the glycogen tank full. So that way there's no huge fluctuation in your weight. And then once we lose weight, it's actually fat that we're losing versus depleting and refilling and depleting and refilling your glycogen storage. Because at the end of the day, if you do keto hundred percent, you're going to lose some weight, right? But now in order for it to last forever, you have to eat that way forever. Because as soon as you stop and you eat carbs, weight's going to come back on, right? Water retention, glycogen storage. So the initial like eight to 10 pounds you lose on a keto diet is not fat. It's just you emptying your tank and getting rid of the water retention that comes from the glycogen, which again are essential for you to, for your muscles to function properly. So like you're not actually losing weight until past your tank being empty. So that's my thought on carbohydrate. Carbs don't make you fat. They're actually good for you. It's your body's preferred source of energy. Your brain loves it. They taste delicious. Mother nature put them everywhere because you need them, right? If we needed fats, we there would be you'd be more fats in, in the agriculture and in the trees and into nature, right? There's only very limited amounts of fat. There's only so many nuts and seeds. There's a ton of fruits and vegetables and grains and all that um, for uh, a reason. And so guys, I want to say, hopefully this valuable, this podcast episode was valuable for you. I know I went on a few different tangents there, but hopefully provided some value, educated you a little bit more about the myths, the myth that exists about transitioning to a plant-based diet. Um, if you need help with that, again, we just opened up a program to take on people that want to transition. Even if it's 70, 80, 90%, or if you want to go hundred percent over time, we can help you through that while helping you lose weight, building healthy habits going to last you for a lifetime and helping you speed up your metabolism post fat loss to ensure you don't put the weight back on. That's very important, right? Because most people get to lose the weight and then the coaches leave you on their own. And then you put all the weight back on. You're like, what happened? We'll help you make sure that that doesn't happen. So you can book your call with the link down below. I'll say massive thank you for listening to the episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.